Hello and welcome to a very special edition of the Open Music Sessions pre-show. I'm your host, Dr. Lockwood. Today is the official end of an era. Um, Denver Open Media for the last 12 years has been led by our fearless leader, Ann Tice, and today is her last day. So even though uh, July is a, a pretty difficult month to have open music sessions, um, we decided to have one anyway. And that kind of segues into one of the bits that we'll be doing is talking about the, the reminders that Anne is going to be leaving us with, because one of the things about Anne is that she is very good at understanding how to really run a true de democratic system, um, a system that both allows for individuals to express themselves and also allows for the whole group to have an equal share uh, in their expression and the, the community expression. So there have been a lot of reminders uh, throughout the years that Anne uh, has tried as best as she could to inculcate into our practice. Um, so we're going to have a few people up here and hopefully they can share some of their insights around things that um, Anne's presence has helped to keep us, I think, uh, what's the right word? in alignment with the rest of the world when it comes to video and audio production. Uh, as a, um, a community access station, a lot of times quality can kind of go out the window and people think, oh, well, it's just community access, we can, we can relax. But one of the things that I personally really appreciate about Anne is uh, that she, This is way more difficult than I thought it would be. Uh, man, I'm gonna miss you so much, Anne. This, this experience of Denver Open Media, I don't even remember what I was talking about. I'm gonna just change subjects right now. Um, this experience for me, working at Denver Open Media, um, having an opportunity to um, ultimately have you as a mentor. Uh, I volunteered for 2018, and there was a lot of things that I learned in that process. Um, and, and as a Denver Open Media member, uh, just an incalculable amount of, of education and personal development that happened. And I think that there's a lot of people here that can say the same thing. Uh, public access is a very challenging uh, beast to run. And for 12 years, uh, and spearheaded, making absolutely magical happenings out of a, a very shoestring budget. Uh, I think everyone can agree that when the things that we were able to accomplish uh, at Denver Open Media over the years was just f far outweighed, the, well, certainly what anybody else has been able to do with that exact same budget since uh, the contract was lost in December. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to ask some people uh, to come on up and just kind of share their little bit. Do I have any, any initial volunteers? It's not so hard. All we need is just uh, either a, a short story or, or maybe something that uh, you learned in the process. John Aiden. Hey. How's it going? How's it going, Jesse? Going good. Good. <laughs> holding back the tears, though. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I know. It is, uh, is an end of an era for sure, just like you said. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, Ann Tice has been station director here for over 10 years. Um, myself, I've been here for uh, six years, I think. Um, and so, so I've, I've, I've got to work with Ann for six years. And, um, you know, I was thinking about her legacy, you know, uh, what, what she has created here and, and what she is uh, leaving behind. And I, uh, there's a lot of things. Uh, building of this station, building of this community. Um, but for me personally, um, when I see her work, it's um, the thing I think about first is the youth. And um, you, uh, Ann uh, Tice started the, the youth group here, uh, which meets weekly, and it's free. It's completely free, and it, it meets um, every Wednesday at 3.30. And... You know, through that work, she has um, 
I mean, she's fostered young minds. And, you know, I think about some of those people, you know, Jonah, uh, Matt, who's back there actually uh, directing. Um, Jameson Corville, who's Jameson, who is now. now staff here, right? Uh, Paulina, Layla, you know, there, Clark, there's just a, a bunch of, a lot of youth that uh, she has fostered through the years and impressed upon them the values of, uh, as, um, you know, civic responsibility and, and also the importance of um, communicating in uh, the 21st century and, um, and learning the language of media. And uh, those are skills that are often not taught in schools and, and she has, um, you know, fostered those skills in, in our, our, with our youth group. And now they're out in the world uh, doing amazing things, um, which is a, a really comforting um, idea. So that's an amazing uh, legacy that Anne has left. Oh, and I think of Anne, I also think of her as an innovator. Um, she is always looking for ways to make this station better, always looking for ways to make the experience that we have with youth better. Um, just as an example, we, uh, last summer we did this uh, a, a program for the second time with Pop Culture Classroom, and it's where we made these uh, superhero films with these uh, kids from um, the Wyatt Academy YMCA. And Anne got this idea, it's like, hey, well, why don't this time, why don't we bring in the symphony, the Colorado Symphony as a partner, and have them score the superhero film, films that the, this youth have made. And it was, it was a super cool idea, and of course, it was a really cool project in the end. It's just really, really cool. So, um, yeah, yeah, it, it's, it, it's, it's a sad time. But if there is a silver lining, it's this, in that, um, you know, Boston, the community around Boston is now going to be able to um, have uh, a, a tireless and super dedicated uh, community builder in uh, Antice as we have been able to take advantage of the last 10 years and as Manhattan did before us. So, uh, yeah. All right, thanks a lot, John. Hey, that you was bet. Some great thoughts. Thanks, yeah. Jesse, and thanks for hosting, man. Oh yeah, indeed. That's what we do here. We <laughs> just kind of jump in, and I, you know, there was a, a certain part of me that wishes that I had more time to really like prepare, and but you know, that's one of the, the things about working around here is that we just do it sometimes. And that's we're, right. We're that's always right. Always wearing at least three or four hats. That, that's true. So. <laughs> that's right. And just jump in when whenever we need it. But uh, yeah, we're great. We have some uh, other people that I'm sure would like to speak. Um, um, about Ann Tice, and we'll bring him up here. Okay, awesome. Ann, you were so kind to us and helped everyone, not only to overcome the issues we were dealing with at the time, but to learn how to troubleshoot our solutions for ourselves. I noticed how much time you spent teaching classes and helping people in the studio, and you would never judge us or laugh at us for not knowing something, but you always spurred us on to excellence, and I appreciate that. Here are a few things you taught me specifically. You taught me to use broadcast picks, to do live switching as a technical director, to set up lights and microphones for a concert. And another thing you taught me personally that I'm very thankful for was how to properly coil XLR cables. That might seem like a small thing, but you can't really be taken seriously as a filmmaker unless you know how to coil a cable. Thank you so much, Anne, for fighting for independent voices and for encouraging us to work as a collective. Thank you for encouraging us, for sharing your time with us, and for being there for us. We wish you the best in Boston. Bless you. So the youth group um, is something that, you know, I don't know if we're gonna be carrying it on. Uh, Matt Bacher, hey Matt. Um, would you mind jumping up here for a second? So Matt Bacher is a member of the youth group. And uh, so first, I'd, I'm, I'm just curious what your experience of the youth group has been, if you can sum it up. Um. Wow, um, the experience of the youth group is just amazing. Um, over the years, um, I have made countless films with Anne, and the biggest thing I got out of it was being able to think about community 
and really brought that in. She was like, you know, you can think about Oscars, you can think about the big picture, you can think about Hollywood, or um, New Mexico, or one of those big works, but what really matters deep down is if you do um, media for your community. You do something that will have an impact in your local audience, and something that really matters. If you do something about um, police brutality, or we did one about um, Rocky Flats and its um, nuclear explosion and how they're dealing with that. And what that really teaches is two things. One, it really helps us as um, inform the community about things that we may not see every day. Two, it teaches about journalism. And three, it really puts into thinking about what you can do for your community and really um, trying to get the community included in the decision making and let them make an informed decision. And I think that um, that's what Anne really taught me because I really came in thinking I'm ready to make films, I want to make narratives, I want to work my way up to a good enough where I can get a stable job and maybe one of the studios in New Mexico or anywhere. But Anne really said, let's take a minute and step away from that, and let's really think about films that really concentrate on your local community, because that is what is important. Yeah, that, that's definitely the voice that's missing in the mainstream mm -hmm. is the local community. And in, in fact, everything is kind of getting geared more towards it. if it's not big, it's not important. And I think that Anne definitely holds the flag of, no, local is important. It doesn't yeah. matter if, if the whole world sees it or not. If, if we're able to communicate mm -hmm. and come closer together as a community, then that, that's something that's more important than, than big money or big ratings that nationwide. Is that is exactly what the message she really wanted to bring across. And I think the other thing that made it even more powerful is that she really wanted us youth to lead that, not her, but the youth. And so I think that made that 10 times more powerful because it is in um, some adults or it's a variety of diversity of kids um, and different range from being um, Hispanic to African American to white and spanning from all over the community of Colorado and just ha instead of having um, politicians really speak out and so I think that made it 10 times more powerful was the youth and then their diversity of that. Yeah, it was genuinely an, an inclusive it's, it's always been a very inclusive yeah. environment where everyone was felt special and, uh, and that was something, definitely something, I mean, I, I volunteered with the youth group and yeah. that was definitely mm -hmm. the lead that I was following, which is just, we're here to help the, these young children learn how to do it themselves. Yeah, exactly. So that's real empowerment. It wasn't, mm -hmm. we're, gonna, we're trying to just get credit, look how many youth group kids we've got. Like there, there was a real mm -hmm. attention to making sure that each individual was listened to and felt per, like they were participating. Yeah. That's something that I, I definitely appreciated about the time that I spent with youth mm -hmm. group. And I think that's um, really what the youth really um, pointed out. And I think the other thing that was really neat was um, the variety of projects. We didn't work, just work on one issue to another. We really worked on what really mattered for um, different youth. So we had um, influxes of increase of youth and then some decrease of them. But the members that we get in from sometimes, um, they have some issues they want to speak out in their local community that might be far away from my community. And um, it really cross-references because you get to see everyone's culture and everyone's issues. Yeah. Because um, even here in Colorado, we're so big that you can't really pinpoint one issue in one certain community here in Colorado. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a very diverse community. So it's nice that you got some crossover and some exposure and experience with people that you wouldn't normally have had an opportunity to be with. So what is the future of the, the youth group um, now that Anne is, is moving to Boston? So, James Corville, I think that's how you say his last Jameson. name. Jameson. Jameson, okay. yeah. Jameson's going to take over as okay. Anne's position. Um, we don't know. Um, the youth group may change its days and times to allow um, more time spent on videos and to allow the influx of more kids to be able to come. We're thinking about going on the weekends. So that would allow more people to be able to get dri driving by their parents okay. and stuff like that. 
Um, the other thing is, um, the, what's interesting is the question about our public access because before we were usually did shows a lot and um, these kind of things uh, that fitted into a show. We made small little PSAs and then we would put it into a show. But now that um, we've taken away our public access TV station, we started to start looking into a lens of maybe, hey, let's not think about um, TV anymore. Let's think about radio and podcast and how we can speak our voices through podcast and radio. Yeah, okay, interesting. Um, so we're going to start building up some projects through that and through our public access, um, access uh, radio. Okay, well, I'm really glad to hear that the, the youth group will be continuing. That, that's a, a, an amazing legacy, and uh, hopefully, yeah, it will continue for, for many, many years. Yeah, that is, right. that is, I think, um, as the youth group, it is her legacy, and that is what she really um, put into what she wanted to continue and put out there, and I hope Anne gets the opportunity to maybe continue their legacy in Boston. Yeah, so if there's, if you are in Boston and Ann Tice has the, the ability to put together a youth group, I wholeheartedly recommend that you check it out because it's a, it's a, just a, a very unique experience what she's been able to create in, in this group. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Matt. Wait, hold on one more thing. Come down on Wednesdays from 3.30 to 6.30. The youth group is free. Drop in, drop out anytime you want. So come out and check us out. So that's available if you're interested. Thanks a lot, Matt. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Hey, Ann, it's Michael Bliss here, and I am at 10th Street Coffee putting together my gallery show that's happening tonight. So I will miss out at Denver Open Media, but I just want to say I am so grateful for you. I started there five years ago as an intern. Now we are working together and directing our own live shows. So what an amazing experience. Part of my dream was to direct live television. I have fulfilled that dream through Denver Open Media and with you helping me out, helping me understand uh, the whole production and learning the, the board. Um, it's just been such a blessing. And I just wanna say from the bottom of my heart, thank you. So, Anne uh, has several connections to the community. She's not just a, a community leader for Denver Open Media, but the just general broadcasting community at large. And uh, we got Dave Ashton uh, from KGNU. Hello. Here to, to spit some game at Anne. Wow, good words about Anne are not hard to come up with um, due to the fact that she exemplifies a type of leadership that is just selfless, that is not um, attached to a clock, you know, the type of just never say die, um, never give up, never um, accede to the pressures, you know, Anne is a real fighter, and as you're hearing here that, you know, it's not that she's like fighting for her own self-aggrandizement, but that it is the community that she needs to um, fight for. So, you know, honestly, we are, we're losing a really incredible resource. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't think that it's really gonna hit us until it does. <laughs> and then we'll be like, oh, that was another one of those things that I just didn't really quite understand that that's what she was doing for us and that's what, the, that, that's what was available while she was here. Because there, I mean, there's, there's, it's a, it's vast the the array of different things that Anne does here at the station. Yeah, I think ten years is an incredible career. You know, that is been an opportunity to shepherd so many people from youth to adulthood to teach real viable skills that people have brought into the marketplace and you know we don't see everyone here tonight you know we've had first Fridays where it's just like jammed to the gills in here we're no, all of those folks are not here today and a lot of them are out like on their own professional career path. So Anne several times has said that we shouldn't do OMS in July because it's just really difficult to get anybody to come out. So right. and so I mean that's just is, is what it is. You know, it's right after Vacations. fourth right after four, around fourth of July. There's lots of people that have taken the four day weekend. Uh, so you know, maybe maybe one of these days Anne's words will sink in. Maybe next year we won't do an OMS July. But the point is that 
a ton of people have been impacted by Anne's work. You know, the youth of today are the adults of tomorrow. And over a 10 year career working so closely with the community, the impacts have just rippled outward. So, you know, with the city pulling back on resources, trying to, um, you know, capture the voice of the people, like it's up to the people now of this community to take that training and that experience on to the next level and let Anne do what she's best at, which is, you know, parachuting into this next community to do this incredible community work and start impacting more lives. Because when you have this tireless dedication to putting the work in, um, that's a very, a very special individual. And, and that is something that, you know, has to be cherished. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I really appreciate the fact that she is going because here in Denver, for what it's worth, we, we've lost the ability to, to be in control of our own community access. Uh, the city has taken it over and they're running it out of their building. And so that, that means that there's just not community access. We're something different now. And what Anne does and what she wants to do, what, what she wants her career to be about is working with community access. And so that's where she's gone. She's gone to, to do her calling. And now it's up to us to those that are staying in Denver to deal with Denver's problems. And it's going to be championing community access, really nationwide, because this this station was a beacon in America as one of the premier community access stations. The things that we were able to do and have access to, especially for the the, the less than normal budget <laughs> um, right. is was really amazing and so I'm certain that wherever she goes in Boston it's gonna be amazing like we're gonna see what maybe community access can be at even a next level because uh, I know VR was something that she's interested in getting involved in so hopefully we'll see some cool VR stuff come out of Boston no doubt well you know in closing I just like to say um, thank you Anne, for working with me for these 10 years you know I can think back it doesn't seem like too long ago when um, you thought I was just another vagabond Hang, hanging around here at the studio so not just another but definitely <laughs> another one of us <laughs> you, you, you eventually dropped the just and uh, and also I just want to apologize that KGNU didn't use its membership to produce copious amounts of video but it's hard video is really difficult and um, yeah. we never really got it figured out because it's very easy to press play on a record, turn a mic on, tell them what you think about it. You know, so our radio thing is uh, much easier for me to teach people than it is for you to facilitate video for folks. So, um, you know, all of the things that we never got edited up, we're going to do it in your absence for you. Thanks. <laughs> all right. Thanks a lot, Dave. Hey, and can't believe you're leaving us. Um, the last couple of years, it's been incredible working with you and I enjoyed every bit of um, the work that we have done together. Look at so much we have achieved. I'm so happy for the opportunity ahead in Boston for you. And at the same time, very sad that you're leaving the Denver community. No doubt that we'll stay in touch and continue um, to work in the media and produce some good content to help to well, educate the public. And so, yeah, thank you so much for everything you have done. And uh, I look forward to uh, seeing you in Boston. There's been a lot of heartfelt words uh, because there's a lot of heart and soul that's been put into this program. These, the, the work that we've done over the last few years has been uh, definitely labor of love. Jump on in, Jeremiah Zent. So Jumping on in. I'll rock the beat. No, all right. So Jeremiah, how long have you been associated with Denver Open Media? I've been associated with Denver Open Media maybe about three years after Ann came around, about 2010, 2011, yeah. somewhere in that ballpark. So, and you know what? This is a great turnout compared to what we used to have back then. Like, it used to be deader than a doornail. So I think that Ann uh, has just helped us all realize that it takes this collective synergy to build this community and to the open music sessions, which has just been one hell of a run. And you know what, guys? It's back. So that's something yeah. to be uh, applauded for. So uh, if there's one thing that I, if I could say something about Ann, I, I want to say that working with Ann is definitely a pleasure. It's like, it's like working with like the Rick Rubin of public access or, or the Tina Fey of public access. 
Uh, not not just like uh, like her personality may not be uh, her 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 uh, her her ability to incubate and, and to have people grow underneath her and, and become uh, additional more stronger contributions to causes uh, to messages and you know she had a very uh, big uh, uh, push for the youth and, and what's amazing about that is you know those youths are now adults and now they're taking over the helm so she's literally. She's planted this seed and grew her replacement here, so she's still here with us, basically. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a clone. <laughs> I'm an Ann clone. Yeah, like an everything Anne clone. I know about <laughs> everything I know about video, pretty much got from her. And, and you know, I, I really appreciate how she holds the space for the professional expectation. The studio, when Anne's in there, the studio is not run like, oh, it's, it's fine, whatever. It's run as if you're in New York yeah. and you're beyond. This is broadcast, baby. Yeah, exactly. And so yeah. I really appreciate that that, that, that she always held that energy of we're, we're going to be working at the highest standard that we know of. And, and she yeah, held that torch. And so we're going to do our best to, to hold that torch the same. Yeah, we'll be fine. Y'all will be fine. And, and it's thanks to her that you'll be fine. So, yeah. Indeed. We'll all be fine. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm going to put you on the spot. You got any uh, f funny anecdotes or uh, stories about Anne? About Anne? Uh, only... Uh, that we can uh, say... On <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, to your point that, that things, you know, when you're young and you're creative and, you, and you're taking advantage of everything that this studio has to offer and, and she's enabled you to, to do things with, you can... You can really go out there on a limb. So uh, I've definitely uh, been a thorn in, in her side in a good way, though, because I think ultimately uh, she felt she's an enabler, and, and therefore, you know, we really pushed the boundaries here when we could. And that's the great thing about here. So that's a funny anecdote, sure. I, I don't know if uh, I want to go in, into any more detail other than I'm still here. I'm not kicked out. So, <laughs> so thanks, Anne. <laughs> So, all right. That's so, uh, what's on what's on the horizon for uh, for Denver Open Media in the future for you? It's, since uh, it's a radio station, I know you're more of a video guy. Are you going to be uh, making radio content? Well, I mean, y you guys still have the studios, uh, and you're merging with Rocky Mountain PBS, yeah, right? That's so, true. you guys are merging into this backbone of, of, of the best of the best of public content. So. The future is wonderful for Denver Open Media. Yeah, yeah, we're not uh, shutting down. We we almost did. It was kind of a brownout, you know, like when you almost pass out. Uh, right. We, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you know what? F the people who who made that a possibility. Like there was no purpose behind doing that. You know, we're not going anywhere. So we're we're the community. DOM forever. We're the community oh, that you might have forgot, but we're still there and we're still projecting. And not having a, 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 a slot in, in, in the nether regions of a cable company's channel programming is not the end of communicating to people. We've got streaming, much more powerful. Uh, we've got the radio station, which uh, is just like a pirate radio beacon right in the center of the city. It's great. You're, you're fine. We've got, yeah. Uh, and, and content is, is evolving so quickly that that you can't like hold on to one particular channel to communicate. That's just silly. Like, do y'all want to still be in 2G or you're looking forward to 5G, right? Like yeah. things change. So technology changes uh, and getting the message out is still, you're, you're more enabled than ever to do that right here, right now, or tomorrow, or this year, or next year. It's all still here, so. Yeah, the community is still here. We're not going anywhere. And so. the access is still here. Yeah, yeah. You're fine. That's it. Yeah. Well, so thanks for the, being a big part of the community. In fact, you're the guy that got me here for the first time. Woohoo! Yeah, that's so. right. <laughs> so uh, he's the I'm one to blame. Glad here. <laughs> and and uh, yeah, what can I say? So it's all we're all in the family still. We're still here, so we're good. Right. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Jeremiah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Alicia B, kick it out. Let's go. I want to. I want to. I want to have a dance. Where's my dance music? <clears throat> all right. Who's up next? Hey, all right, Joe Contreras. How's it going, Joe? It is going good. Awesome, good to see you. Good to see you. You know, I showed up today just to pay my personal uh, acknowledgement to Anne. I, I, I guess she's downstairs. But I just wanted to express my gratitude to her 
for all that she has done. So many people have done so many things, and I could reiter reiterate a lot of that, but there's no need to. They've said so much of what she has meant to this community, and, and, and not just to the overall community, but also to the Latino community. You know, I'm, I'm the president and CEO of Latin Life Denver Media, and we do a lot of, we do a magazine, we do a lot of stuff, but she has able to do, enabled us to create so much more through Denver Open Media. Yeah. You know, she's allowed us to host the three-hour Cinco de Mayo specials right here in this yeah. building, uh, and, and, and really left it open to whatever we wanted to do, and really allowed us to um, share in the credit for what we've done and what she does. So it, 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 it's just, you know, one, one door closes and another window opens, and hopefully she'll sneak us through that window and remember us going forward. But like the person before me expressed, we all move forward. Things change. We'll move on. We'll survive. Uh, we wish her the best. We know she's going to do well. We want her to keep us in mind. We want her not to forget about us because she's, she's, she's laid such a strong foundation here in Denver yeah. that we all can build upon. And yes, it's a, it is a major loss, but other people are going to have to pick up the slack. We're all yeah. going to have to step up and, and, and improve our game. And yeah, now we're doing mostly radio, and we love doing the radio aspect. You can stream the radio live on. Absolutely. And like the person before me expressed, streaming. There's so many platforms for us to express ourselves in. This is definitely one of them that allows us to really launch ourselves into so many other platforms. We can be on the internet. We can be on the FM dial with the radio. We can still create uh, video media and, and, and put that on YouTube or wherever we want to put it. Thanks to Anne. She's really enabled us to do that. Yeah, it's a shame that the city took over what had been here for so many years and what Anne had worked so hard. And I know it was heartbreaking for her to have to step away and look for another position. Yeah. And it's heartbreaking for us to see her go because we are really losing an ally. But like I say, we need to step up. We need to yeah. take control of our own destiny going forward. I'm not sure who's going to be in charge. Are you? <laughs> Are you going to be no, doing No, no, I won't be in charge. Uh, some, I'll, I'll be helping out, same All as right. always. Who, who is taking over at uh, place? Do we have an I mean, I know that the, the, yeah, they're hard shoes to there's, fill, no, no doubt. Thing. So there's, there's nobody that can be taking over for Anne. Uh -huh. they're, what basically, they're my, they're, we're all going to kind of step in to take over some of the responsibilities because there isn't another single person that could do all those things. So I know that Jameson Corville, um, who was part of the youth group uh, as a youth, um, he's going to be stepping into some more responsibility and, and running a certain parts of it. And then, um, yeah, we're just, we'll just see how, how it all comes together. <laughs> well, you know, it, does what. It's all a testimony to how much work and dedication and love and passion that she put into Denver Open Media. Absolutely. One of the things that nobody got to see unless they were staff was the fact that Ann would most of the time work until 10, 10.30 at night. So come in at, at noon and work till 10.30 every day. You know, that's so true. I don't remember a time coming in here where Ann was not here. Yeah. You know, I mean, she, was, she, she may have been too busy to, to deal with you at that time, but she was always here, you yeah. know? Yeah. You, you really had to... Uh, reach out to try to schedule a time with her, but wow, yeah. she was married to the place. It, it, it's a tough divorce, you know, but, <laughs> <laughs> but what are you gonna do, you know? Well, yeah, I think, I think what, what you do is what, exactly what she did, which was acknowledge this time as a success, that for the, the, the time that Denver Open Media was a community access station, it was one of the best in the country, and then now it's time for her to move on to a, 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 that same calling, but in a different area. And some, to some degree, we, we just have to share, um, we have to share her with, well, with well, the know, rest not, of the what country. What I think is so important <laughs> is that we in, continue to include communities of color, like Anne did, Indeed. with Latin Life a Denver. Ch a champion of that. A like champion of our that. Our inclusiveness committee, I, I don't know who, who founded it, but um, Anne certainly was the leader as, uh, every time that I, I've been involved with it. So, yeah. That's, you know, I, I know she put a lot of promotion into bringing in the Spanish-speaking population of Denver, even though there weren't Spanish-speaking instructors here, she yeah. still reached out. She, I'll, I'll figure it out once they come in. I'll figure out. And a lot of people did come in, yeah. and, and including Latin Life Denver. We had a regular radio show here. We had a regular television show here. And, you know, since this turmoil, we've kind of slipped away. We've kind of dropped off because we want to see what's, what, what's going to shake out. Where are yeah. we going to land doing all of this? Yeah. And 
just by being here today, I feel re-inspired, like, no, we are going to continue to participate. We're not going to, just because Anne's going away, which is a great loss, we're not going to go away. We're yeah. still here, and we're not going anywhere. And, it, and it's, <laughs> it's up to us now. I mean, I think that's what every good mentor wants, is they want their pupils or the people that, they, that have mentored under them to be able to take their own flight. And that's, yeah. that's where we're at now, is that we get to, to spread our own wings and, and, and as a community come together, uh, maybe, hopefully even a little bit stronger. You know, and just in closing, uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to say something maybe kind of corny, but I want to say, viva Anthes, viva Denver Open Media. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Joe. Hi, Anne. This is a video greeting for you. I'm writing from Benicia, California, where I'm on a summer vacation. For over four years, I've been a producer at Dom, making episodes for my show, Getting High on Anthropology, a story-based approach to cannabis research, education, and funding. I first gravitated to Dom because of its commitment to community media and democratic principles. You embody the genuine qualities of putting power of the media and technology in the hands of the people. You supported an application for a small grant from the Open Media Foundation to the nonprofit group Sisters of Color United for Education, which I helped to co-administer. When I asked you about the grant and what makes a good recipient, you told me one that stays involved with DOM. So for over four years, I've been a proud member and an active member of DOM, and I am grateful to you for that. Um, also, you have been supportive with all my media needs and directly contributed to episodes of my show being top notch. I have fond memories of you and I feel that I'm a better media leader because of you. And thank you for all your work and good luck with all your future endeavors. Hey Scoop, got a mic for you. How's it going? Hey everybody. Hey Scoop. Hey, excellent. Happy July 4th week, everybody. So, Scoop, when was the first time you met Anne? When I moved to Denver in September 2011, I was just becoming a member of Denver Open Media. Okay, and uh, would you like to share any thoughts about your relationship with Anne or, or, or anything that you found amusing? Uh, or any funny yeah, anecdotes? Yeah, Anne was one of those people that understood people with autism and Asperger's and who told me to think positive whenever I start getting all negative Nancy and everything. Yeah, which, uh, you know, part of, of autism and, and especially Asperger's, and you also, I, I think, uh, have, have some Tourette's. Is that, is that also accurate? Yeah, bit. I like yeah. to cuss, but yeah. I can't do so on TV. <laughs> Definitely not on TV. That, seeing that we're <laughs> also being simulcast on KOMF well, FM. If, if anybody has ever edited video, you know that there is plenty of reasons to cuss <laughs> and plenty of reasons to get upset. And so in those moments when you found it difficult to stay calm and you, you felt frustrated, how, how did Anne treat you in those moments? Anne and people around me told me to take a walk and for a few minutes and take a deep breath and everything. And did you always feel like you were, you were welcome? Yes, I always felt like I was welcome. Yeah, absolutely. I, 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 that's something that, that she impressed upon all of us and even some of us that, were, that, that have worked here in the past that weren't familiar with, uh, with someone that, that like you. Um, and we were always encouraged to see that you're just like one of us and you may have some special needs, but that you're, you're, you're the reason why we held the space down there is so that people like you and specifically you, because I'm, I'm a big fan, Scoop. I really, I really appreciate what you do. We wanted to make sure that you had a place that you didn't have to worry about losing because I know that, that, that out in the world there are some times when places just they don't want to have anybody that's different around they just want kind of people that are normal and and regular and that's certainly not me and it's certainly not you and I think that one that's that's really the beautiful beautiful thing about what we were able to create is a place a home for all of us to be able to to work and be creative 
And Anne was one of those people to make a home for people like us. Absolutely, yeah. So, um, let's see, would you like to just uh, speak to the camera, just kind of say some words to Anne uh, of appreciation? Anne, on behalf of everybody here at Denver Open Media, Denver, Denver Open Media won't be the same without you, Anne. Though, but I wish you all the best in your travels, in your next adventure. And whenever I take a vacation to places like Boston, I'll make sure I'll call you up and come see you. Yeah, we're going to all crash at your pad. <laughs> we're going to take a big bus trip out to, to, to Boston, and we'll stay with Anne. How's that sound? Love it. All right, awesome. Thanks a lot, Scoop. Is there anything else you want to add? Nope, that's all. OK. Best, best of luck in your endeavors, Anne. Thanks a lot, Scoop. Let's give it up for Scoop Nemeth. Hi, Anne. We were very sorry we couldn't make it for your big first Friday. We wanted to say good luck in Boston. We're so psyched that you got that new role. It's our favorite city, even though one of us hasn't been there yet. Do you want to say something? We're a bit of a pen and Teller act. Anyway, good luck. Please stay in touch. We'll talk to you soon. All right, now the internship program has brought in a lot of different people over the years, and uh, Kenji Uden is one of those. Uh, how's it going, Kenji? Good, how are you doing? Doing really well. Cool. Um, yeah, so uh, you, you don't live here anymore, huh? Well, no, no. I'm okay. uh, in California. All right, cool. Yeah. And uh, so what are, you, what are you doing in California? I'm a boilermaker. Okay. Yeah. Uh, same job I've been doing, just... Uh, working out there now okay yeah yeah you get into working in any films I did a little bit out there in Hollywood um, I'm, I've been uh, networking I knew some friends that are in the business so I've been you know trying to make my way in a little bit yeah yeah meet cool. some people cool yeah so how has what you learned here at Denver Open Media impacted your life well um, I wanted to make music videos and that's why I came to Denver Open Media. I um, joined the internship, and I wanted to learn about video production and lighting and everything you need to know. So uh, I didn't know anything when I came here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> as you know, I ask you a lot of questions. Yes. <laughs> I've asked Anne a lot of questions. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, um, it's impacted me, it t taught me the fundamentals and the basics and now I can make music videos yeah yeah all right yeah. <laughs> cool so uh, what would you like to say to Anne personally um, I just want to thank you Anne for all your help um, all the times that you helped me and Kenny on broad broadcast picks <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, uh, just uh, I think you're a good person and uh, you and Jose I love you both you guys are both great so uh, just thank you for all your help and for your leadership here at DOM all right gonna miss you <laughs> indeed well you know that you're in California uh, maybe the two of you could meet here in Denver uh, maybe time it out yeah <laughs> she yeah comes back to visit yeah Facebook helps with that too, so. Yeah, yeah. We're international out. now. It's just a matter of time. We're going to spread out all yeah. across the nation. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I'm sure I'll see her again. Indeed. Yeah, so. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, thanks a lot. All right. Well, thank you. Take care, Kenji. Yeah. Okay, hi. I'm Sam Fuqua here in my office at Pop Culture Classroom. It's Lieutenant Uhuru behind me, Nichelle Nichols. She will make sure this transmission gets communicated to the entire galaxy. At uh, Pop Culture Classroom, we do literacy and arts education. We're best known as the producers of Denver Pop Culture Con, Denver Comic Con. I'm really sorry I can't be there tonight to join in the appreciation of Ann Tice. Uh, Ann, you've just been a fabulous uh, partner for Pop Culture Classroom over many years. We've done workshops together for kids on comics and filmmaking. Open Media has had a great presence in our kids' lab. and. I know all the young people involved would not have had those experiences if it hadn't been for you. And I think I'm one of dozens of nonprofit partners who can say that. Uh, 
your work has been so critical to, I think, literally thousands of people throughout Metro Denver, uh, young and old. You know, uh, one of the things that inspires me still, after 30 years almost of involvement in independent media, is when new people come into places like open media and they learn and grow. They learn technical skills, but they also learn a different way of thinking about media. They learn how to be cr critical consumers of media, and they learn how to take the media in their own hands and tell their own stories. You, Anne, have made that possible, and I am eternally grateful. Uh, I know you're going to Boston, and I think uh, that's great for Boston, right? Uh, you're gonna continue your work in independent media out there. Denver's loss is Boston's gain, but, uh, you know, we don't get a better society, we don't get a better world without better media. And that takes people like you and me and Ann Tice. So thanks again, Ann, for everything. Wish y'all the best. Live long, prosper. End of transmission. How's it going? Bill. Bill. I'm nice Bill, Bill Freud. I'm part of the class of 2011, who came to Denver Open Media, got okay. to meet Ann and Tony, and Lynn, who I saw downstairs. We gotta get Lynn up here. Okay, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, I'm getting the signal, hold it closer. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I'm just very appreciative to Denver Open Media. They gave me my start in video production when I retired from a career in IT. Okay. And I spent time in the tool crib and uh, they taught me video production and video editing. And uh, it wasn't always easy, I have to say, because uh, when Ann was busy, you wanted funny stories. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. trying, I'm trying. But everyone knows Anne's great and she led and all this stuff. But I'll tell you what, if she was busy, she, you could talk, you could be talking right into her ear and she wouldn't flinch. You know, she'd keep doing what she's doing. And, but then uh, still somehow hearing you. And, and, and hearing. Like, and then, and yeah, then be able you to You know answer. what I'm saying. I do, yeah, yeah. yeah. Multitasker. And, and, and so later on I learned, don't, don't do that. Wait till she's done or send her an email, write her a note. <laughs> And uh, she's just tremendous because she's always thorough and followed up, kept the station you know, running and cared and trained people, and uh, I'm very appreciative. Yeah, yeah, awesome. So I know we're stretching, uh, so if there's, if there's someone else who wants to come up or if you want to ask me a question, I'll be, I worked here uh, as an intern, and then I produced uh, Farmore, Colorado for seven years. That's what it was, Farmore. I knew I, knew I yeah. recognized your name from yeah, some... Yeah, okay. I, I produced 74 half-hour episodes and okay. two years in studio, and then we went in the field and did the last five years. And uh, it was the training I got here that helped me start a production company of my own. Wow, that's great. Yeah. And uh, very appreciative. And uh, the, the gentleman who first taught me in the tool crib is here tonight. And he showed me the ropes, and his name is Ed. Who's that? Yeah. Ed, are you coming in here? Ed Chasteen. Hey, buddy. Good job. Thanks a lot, Bill. Oh, what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to get me on camera. Well. So, uh, Ed, how much have you learned from man? <laughs> Uh, well, I basically retired out of construction and I started doing music videos for bands in Denver. And one of my friends suggested coming and checking this place out. So I was about a year and a half, two years into making music videos for local bands in Denver. And I came into Denver Open Media and I was like, holy shit, look at this. And, excuse my French. Uh, it's okay, we're not, we're not broadcasting right now, so we uh, can say all kinds of things that we yeah. shouldn't say, but. But long them out. story short, I came here, I did three internships, uh, I started doing every open first Friday that there was. I think I missed three or four in the last yeah. like 10 years. But uh, that's where I learned a lot because. When you're in the environment, getting ready for a live production, that's where all the learning comes, that's where all the training comes, and I can thank her for that. Yeah, I mean, I've seen you that down, I can't remember a time when you weren't there. Yeah, sorry, it's tough right now. But, uh, 
I'm just going to say, love you, Ann. Going to miss you. That's all I got. Yeah, that's good. Thanks a lot, Ed. Hey, it's me, Sammy, bad boy answer. And DOM, I would love to be there. Uh, I'm back home in Queens, New York. If you could see the beautiful skyline of that tree. Look at that famous New York skyline right there. Like I said, I would love to be there. I know you're moving on to bigger and better things. No DOM's gonna miss you. No, I'm gonna miss you. Um, I've been personally touched by the work that you've done. You've helped me do things that I thought that I couldn't even do. And I know that you're gonna continue to do that wherever you go. So, I just wanna say thank you. I just wanna say that you're loved and appreciated. And I hope that you feel that every day, wherever you go. I hope to see you soon. I don't know why I just saluted. So, uh, have you met Anne? I, I have, in fact, met Anne. Okay, yeah, yeah. what'd you think? She's fantastic. Um, she, she's pretty cool, yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, I, uh, I've been here about like a year. I've done two different internships. Um, and Anne's basically run this entire uh, station. Um, I don't think she gets enough credit uh, for everything that she does and has done. Um, and she's definitely going to be missed. Uh, this place isn't going to be the same without her. So, yeah, it's going to definitely take on something. It'll become something new. Um, mm -hmm. And but I, I, I think that uh, it's just kind of fitting that uh, that we. I don't know. I think it's. I think I don't know what I'm going to say. I think. How about that? <laughs> I, I, I was about to make a point, and then I was like, nope, that point's dumb. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I think, I, think the, I, I remember the point you were going to make. Oh, yeah. Could it you, was could a you very good point. Me? It was very profound. Um, I can't remember verbatim what your thoughts were, uh, but it was something along the lines of um, it's going to be a difficult transition, and uh, although we will survive, we will have been changed forever, and this place just will not, it just won't be the same without her. That's, yeah. that's, that's what you were thinking, right? That was precisely what I yeah. was thinking. Thanks, Joey. <laughs> Are we good? <laughs> All right, so um, it looks like we're kind of ramping down as far as time, so we need to kind of put a capstone on this whole video. So we make videos. Sometimes uh, we don't always have a script. Occasionally, yeah. But uh, I think what I'd like to do is, can we just get... And everybody that's in this room, in front of the camera, real quick, can we step away from, from the camera? Uh, can we do that? And just, I just want to get everybody, everybody lined up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah come on, everybody. We're gonna, we're come gonna come that, join that, inc that includes you. Hey, Mike Fox, why don't you come on up? <clears throat> Joe Galvin. Everybody. Jeremiah Zentz. Absolutely, We're, we're just going to get everybody on, on camera. Every, real quick. Everybody. Les Leslie, you want to? Le Leslie. I'm, I'm roping in everybody. Matt Struck. Where's there, Matt Struck? I don't know. Matt Struck's got. Yeah, I'm sure Matt he's Struck? here. I saw him, but I didn't. That's he's like a superhero. All right. Well then, we're gonna count to three, hey, hey, and we're just gonna say uh, we love you, Anne. And which which uh, which camera are we we are live on right now? Center camera. What's that one? Center camera. Yeah, center camera. Okay. All right. So, three, two, one. We love you, Anne. Ready? Three, two, one. We, we love, love you, Anne. Anne.